Let's see, um, Biden was speaking at a, um, a church congregation the other day, speaking out against certain things like hate. Um, former Vice President Joe, Joe Biden paid a visit to Sunday services at Bethlehem Baptist Church, a large black congregation um, um, here, urging the crowd to fight back against hatred and condemning 45 and some of his strongest language yet for hating racial divisions in the country. Yeah, because ever since 45 took office, the racism and hate just skyrocketed under him. The squatter and his Ku Klux Klan supporters and the rest of the inbreeders, they think they've beaten us again, but they have no idea we're just coming back, that we're fighting, that we're going to come back, Biden told the congregation. He says, I thought you could defeat hate, he said, but hate only hides it. It never fully goes away, he added, pointing to the outbreak of the white supremacy violence in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017, and they asked 45 then what he thought, and he said there were very fine people on both sides. That's not a good enough answer. When, from a guy that's supposed to be your leader, but he's just squatting in the White House. Referring to what he called a historic infect, inflection, inflection point, when the place aimed fire hoses at civil rights activists in Birmingham, Alabama during the 60s, <coughs> galvanizing more of the country behind their movement, Biden said that the country had reached a similar moment. He remarks, his remarks are to the 1,300-member congregation were, were among the strongest come in condemnations of the, of the squatter to date in a campaign season in which a number of leading candidates have harshly criticized the, 45, the, the squatter's posture on race and immigration. Biden also made the comments as he seeks to position himself as the inevitable Democratic challenger to 45. One of his main rebels in the primary race, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, has sought to, to more forcefully confront the, form, the former vice president, tangling with him in recent days over, over the Social Security record. On Sunday, Sanders continued that uh, that line of attack, saying in New Hampshire that time and time again, for, um, Biden has been clearing has been clear in supporting cuts to Social Security, which I'm not. Um, Sanders, for his part, has been trying to move move on from his rift um, southern rift with, with um, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. Asked at a separate event in New Hampshire on Sunday if gender remained an obstacle for female politicians, he responded yes, then quickly changed the subject to age. The answer is yes. The answer is yes, but I think everybody has their own sets of problems. He said, I'm 78 years of age, that's a problem. There are a lot of people who say, well, I like Bernie, he's a nice guy, but he's 78 years old, so we have to argue, please look at the totality of who I am. See, that's my other complaint, too, for, um, with when it comes to um, people trying to become president. I um, I can understand, I like Bernie, but he's 78 years old, and who knows how long he's going to last as, as, um, as being in the, in the White House. In South Carolina on Sunday, Biden left his seat at one point during the joyful services to hug and shake hands with church members, joining them in hymns and applause, something that you would never see 45 do. It's contagious when you're in a black church, he quipped during his 12-minute um, his twelve minute remarks to the congregation. Biden was seated in the front pew with his sister, Valerie um, Owens, and Representative Terry, um, Terry Sewell, a Democrat of Alabama, who introduced Biden and spoke out about her recent endorsement of him. He also picked up the end endorsement of the Reverend Anthony McCollum, the congregation's pastor, who compared him to former, to the likes of former President Barack Obama. Let's get behind this soldier, Pastor McCollum told his congregation, someone who could touch all people, not just the 1%, but to the common folk. It was the first event of Martin Luther King's birthday week, um, weekend visit here in South Carolina by Biden, who was aiming to cement his support in the early primary state. Where polls six weeks before the election show he is the strong front runner, at least partly on the strength of his association with Obama. Biden, who stayed after the service for more than an hour to talk with members of that congregation, invoked the name Barack twice during his remarks on Monday. He is expected to join seven of the 2020 Democratic rivals in a King Day rally at the state, um, at the at the state capitol, an annual event that began 20 years ago and, and has become practically mandatory for Democratic presidential candidates during election years as they try to win over black voters. Other candidates also attended church services here in, in, in Columbia on Sunday morning. The only African-American candidate remaining in the race, Deval Patrick, the former Massachusetts governor, was offering remarks at nearby Bethel African, Bethel African Methodist Episcopal, Episcopal. Both men were expected to attend a breakfast sponsored by the Urban League on Monday morning. Campaigning on Sunday in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the site of what is regarded as the single worst massacre of black citizens by their white counterparts in history, Michael Bloomberg, the former New York City mayor, recalled the slaughter of hundreds of African Americans by white mobs in that city as well as East St. Louis. Um, um, East St. Louis, Illinois, Elaine, Arkansas, and Rosewood, Florida, and, and just that short 
period from 1917 to 23. More than 1,000 black Americans were killed by white mobs in cities and towns all across the country, said Bloomberg, one of the few candidates who were not scheduled to appear this weekend in South Carolina, as he pursues an unusual campaign strategy with a national focus. But the truth is this. What happened during that period was part of a continuum of violence that black Americans faced even after the end of slavery, violence that denied them their lives, their, pop their liberty, and the pursuit of being happy. Biden arrived in South Carolina on Sunday morning and attended an oyster roast later in that day. A busload of circuit campaigners had arrived earlier this past week, crisscrossing the state on a bus in what was called his Soul of the Nation tour. <coughs> Sorry. Speaking to predominantly black audiences at a church, social halls as well as in beauty halls and barbershops, the group of Biden surrogates included Randall Woodfin, the mayor of Birmingham, Alabama, Sean Patrick Thomas, an actor who grew up in, um, in Biden's home state, Delaware, and, and Simone Sanders, a former spokesperson for Sanders during his 2016 campaign, who has become a top advisor to Biden now. While those attending the events in South, in South Carolina were mostly supportive of Biden, at least two people raised questions about his role as a senator in helping write the 1994 crime bill that was regarded by many crime experts as contributing to the mass incarceration of black men. In his church remarks, Biden recalled meeting clients near the Amtrak station in, Woman, in Wilmington, Delaware, when he was a young defender, public defender and later standing at the same station for his inauguration as vice president in January of 2009. 40, 40 years later, Biden said, I was standing on that same platform waiting for a black man to come down on a train 27 miles away from Philadelphia to pick this white boy up and go 127 mile, miles down to Washington to be sworn in as, as president and vice president of the United States. Choking up when he mentioned his deceased son, Bo, Biden said on that day he told his children that things had changed. Excuse me for a second here. Ugh. That coffee in the morning. Keep me awake. <clears throat> Biden also invoked Dr. Dream, Dr. King's dream that all men were created equal. Um, doc, um, Dr. Martin Luther King didn't give up on his dream, and I'm asking you all, don't give up on yours, he, he added. We can defeat this moment of hate. Um, Joe Biden did not say anything at the church about his back and forth a day earlier with Sanders over Social Security, but Sanders returned to it during remarks with reporters on Sunday in Conway, New Hampshire, where he leveled a broad critique of Biden's record. If you run for office, you can defend your record. But um, Sanders said, characterizing Biden's Senate votes off the raising military action in Iraq and on other issues, he said, Joe voted for the war in Iraq. Um, Sanders vigorously opposed it. Joe voted for a bankruptcy bill, which I think has been harmful to work and families. Rigorous, I, and he said, and um, um, Joe, Joe Biden voted for that, for that bankruptcy bill, and Sanders voted against it. Joe voted for a number of trade agreements, like the North American Free Trade Agreement, which Sanders said undercut good jobs in the United States. Now getting to the issue of Social Security. Time and time again, Joe Biden has made it clear in supporting cuts to Social Security. Sanders argued, citing Biden's support for a balanced budget amendment in the 1990s that the Vermont Center said would have harmed the program. In Concord, New Hampshire on Sunday, Sanders addressed questions about gender during a New Hampshire public radio forum, nothing that age and other factors could also sway noting that age and other factors could sway voters' decisions. If we're looking at um, Buttigieg, yes, he's a young guy, people will say, but he's too young to be president, Sanders said, referring to Pete Buttigieg, the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana. Look at this one, she's a woman, so everybody brings some negatives if you like, he went on. I, I would just hope very much that the American people look at the totality of a candidate, not just at their gender, not at their sexuality, not at their age, but at everything. Nobody is perfect. There ain't no, there isn't, any, there, there ain't no perfect candidate out there, which is true, there isn't.